Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and today I'm starting my solo playthrough of Brazil Imperial, which pretty much blew me away. I played it in multiplayer now quite some times, in two players, three players, enjoyed it every time. It's really such a fast paced 4x slash worker placement action selection thing really is incredibly fun comes with beautiful components and yes i'm saying this to you because i bought this game myself this is no review copy whatsoever no one is giving me anything for that i just want to express that i'm a huge fan of this game with that being said i've never played the solo mode before though that's basically what i'm doing today and yeah I simply want to see how things go. As far as I know there is only one real solo scenario out there right now. There could be something, they mentioned something in their rule books that they have more scenarios on their social media, on their website. Didn't really check those out yet honestly. So bear with me here. If you are aware of additional solo scenarios please absolutely let me know. In this game of Brazil Imperial, and sorry, I had to get myself uh, pretty much a print out of the English rules. I'm using the German version of the game, so again, you have to bear with me. For the most part, the game is more or less language independent. Yeah, maybe not so much. There are a lot of these gold cards and, and combat cards, which you basically need a translation for, but not really awfully complicated. And yeah. As usual, I will translate on the fly, at least I will try my best. But again, in this scenario, we are seeing here the Battle of Guarapes. Uh, the Dutch want to become the kings of sugar, but the Empire has plans to deal with the invaders arriving in the state of Pernambuco. So in order to win the scenario, we have to complete these three objectives here pretty much before the end of round 20, which means we are more or less taking 20 actions in this game. Yes, through some gold cards, you will be able to get um, extra actions or free actions. And I really think that this might become very crucial in order to stand any chance here. But ultimately, we are trying to get from here to there and pretty much invade the capital of our opponent here. These are the Dutch. They have to be in orange. <laughs> Makes sense, right? Usually in a multiplayer game, you are not able to attack the capital of another player. You can pretty much attack everything else from them, but not the capital in this. This is really the name of the game. So we have to get here and take them down. They really come with an awful lot of fighting power here. So this cannon alone has a two, this a Dragoon, I believe, or this, this knight or whatever you want, I think it's a Dragoon, um, comes with, I think, three strength points in total. So they're also going to draw combat cards for each of those miniatures on this space. So definitely a lot to deal with. But we are not just doing that. We are not just going after this capital here. No, we also have to advance to era three, which means we have to complete two of our gold cards in order to win this scenario. Um, some of the gold cards, and I already did the drafting here, might, let's say, help you on your way because I've chosen the cards that really are important to get us going here. On top of this, we also have to have all five military units deployed and on the map, so we cannot lose those. But again, that's a little bit on us. If we are losing, then we did something very wrong here. And um, yeah, ultimately, what I already described, we have to seize the Dutch capital in it. Yes, in this channel, you can attack the enemy capital. You are not free to choose um, the player colors. In this case, you have to go with the green player. And for the most part, those player boards are more or less the same. They all come with slightly different units. And these units then also come with pretty much the same, let's call it special abilities, but not always um, have the units the same special ability like for another color. So let's take blue, for example, the, I think it's the monarch or the commandante here. Um, for the blue player also has the ability of the dragoon, whereas the blue player doesn't have 
the Dragoon, for example. So these are one of the things. And on top of this, we also have more or different leaders with their special abilities. And here I've chosen Dom Pedro, who pretty much gives us extra bonuses when we are first deploying our units. And as the name of the game is to get all five units out there, I thought that's definitely a good synergy if we are focusing on getting troops out to get some rewards from those things. So in this scenario, we are not really playing for victory points in any way. We really want to complete our goals. And again, the first goal is to fulfill those two goal cards here. Again, those are in German, but all that matters are those icons here. So for the first or moving from era one to era two, we have to come up with one unit. We have to build, I think that's a trading post and we have to build a farm then we can pretty much say, okay, we have done that. Then we are moving into era number two, where we then have to come up with three units, two of those paintings, and we have to build one city. The paintings are usually extremely powerful. So we want to get them anyway in order to help us in our endeavor. And in a normal scenario, we would also then, or completes the gold card from the third era would then also call for the end of the game. Not necessarily winning the game, but they're triggering the end of the game and usually are trying to trigger the end of the game. If you think you have won by that time and you will may most likely will also score some additional points for this. I have still selected one of the goal of the era three gold cards, but again, we don't have to finish that in any way because we have to come up with all five units. This goal is something that we are going to achieve anyway. These products is also something most likely we are going to build maybe not exactly those two but who knows and yeah this last goal pretty much build build two buildings of era three which are also extremely powerful what may be something we may not want to focus too much in this solo mode here the map is pretty much preset as per the scenario rules. The only, let's call it, uh, random pieces are those expiration tiles here, which I don't know if they really do help us an awful lot. There are some which give you, for example, knowledge tile or knowledge as a resource or would give you gold cards, which are then powerful. So uh, that's why I still left then on here but some of those simply give you additional victory points and these are the ones where i say mm, let's not worry too much about this and 20 actions or 20 turns is not an awful lot so i don't think i have a lot of time to really look into my i don't know industry too much other than if they would help me to get my forces moving towards that. Again, I don't have to conquer all of those spaces. So in theory, I could whatever move down here. This is, I think these two are the weakest ones, for example. So I can go after those. I don't have to go through all, but at some point in time, I have to go through those here. And again, the AI, or not really an AI, the orange player, the Dutch are not building anything. They're not collecting victory points. They're just here. And when we attack them, they will defend by whatever, drawing some random combat cards. Yeah, and I think with that being said, let's get cracking as usual. I will explain everything as I go. The one thing that was not 100% clear to me for the solo mode is how those starting capitals would work. Normally you are basically shoveling those and there is one tile which gives you a random re or not a resource of your choice. As I think I am the starting player, I have to go with this one and this one gives us one of those wood resources here, which we will put into our supply on our player board. And there is a limit of five resources on our player board here, but typically not that big of a deal. Should be able to manage that. That's the only thing where I'm not 100% sure if this also works the same way as in a multiplayer game. I assume if that's not allowed and I'm already cheating here, then yeah. Uh, that's uh, whatever result with an asterisk, but I don't expect to win anyway. I think I have a good hang of the multiplayer mode, but I have no clue in respect to the timing. But 20 turns sounds like maybe a normal multiplayer where it's really a relatively fast paced game. If you know what you're doing, if you get your goals um, pretty much fulfilled soon enough, then yeah usually you don't really need an awful lot of time but i never counted my turns actually okay so let's get started a turn is pretty simple we will take the action marker from the 
pretty much from the era we are in right now we are in era one here in the exploration era you take one action you get a free movement and it may be an additional movement depending on the action you are taking and that's pretty much it so it's really not a lot you are doing you place one of these markers here um you take the action and then it's pretty much over to the next player and yeah with my First action, I should consider getting more resources out. And when I'm looking at my, let's say, goal cards here, I need to build a trading post and I need to build a farm. Both of those require two resources each. So they all come with one wood and with one other resource. This could be a sugar cane or this could be coffee in this case and again the components in this game it's it's really top notch you will see that in a second this is really the most boring resource I <laughs> and the same is true for sugarcane but let's look at gold for example this all looks really really nice the trading post will give us some gold and some wood in return and again the wood is something we could then use for the plantation here or for the farm i think it's a farm in the german version it's really a coffee plantation more clearly here it's just a farm but yeah i take it so but of course i don't have the resources just yet i i started the game with one wood so i think the very first action could be to pretty much visit the harbor here which would give us any one resources these bonus spaces down here we can ignore for now these only trigger when we are basically um, manufacture some of the products i will come to that but i for this scenario i don't need that many products or maybe i will have to keep this to a minimum too but yeah let's do that so we are going to the harbor here. We are triggering this action. Again, we are not getting the bonus here, but this gives me any one resource. I want either sugarcane or coffee. So I think in this case, doesn't really matter too much because we are spending it anyway. So we are simply going with one coffee here. And that's already the end of our action. In theory, I would now gain a free movement moving one of my troops on the map right now there aren't any troops on the map obviously and then on top of my let's say free movement i would also gain what's below the space and this one here that's a bit special this gives me either one additional combat point um, when i attack or plus two combat points when I defend. I will never really defend in this scenario here, so I think I can ignore this one here, but I don't get any extra movement from that action. But as I don't have any units out there on the board, we can forget about that anyway. And poor as I am, I didn't even find a 20-sided die, so I have to track my turn. So I will use these wooden discs, and they do not come with the game. That was my very first action out of 20. And then, yeah, basically, the eye or my opponent doesn't take any action so it's already back to me i cannot take the same action here because it's already blocked so i have to move it somewhere else and again i think the idea was to build something relatively soon so i guess let's do that right away so we are building stuff again i'm not getting the bonus here which is a pretty cool one it allows me to yeah, pretty much substitute any basic resource with another basic resource again for this trading post i need wood and coffee and if would this would have been unlocked here with um basically one of those products here i could use basically any of those basic resources but again i have coffee i have the wood not a problem so i am allowed to build basically anything out of this but we are going to go with the trading post here it has to be built on a wood tile so we cannot simply put it out in the place but also not a problem as we have a wooden space right next to us and we have to build adjacent to either one of our cities our capital or another building in that respect so in this case that's built next to or adjacent to our capital totally legal the first time you are building a building they're automatically producing their products in this case that's gold gold is a wild card for more or less anything there is one more powerful which i think think is how are those called i keep forgetting there's a science actually science can also replace gold so the most precious resource is science in this game and makes sense so from here i can pretty much use it in a multiplayer game any resources that are out on the board think about scythe for example is pretty much free game whoever takes this one over 
also controlling those resources here. But again, in this um, scenario, not really a concern. But from here, I can directly use it for anything I would like. So that was already turn two. Again, I would also gain a free movement. You always get a free movement for any of those actions. And depending on which actions you're taking, you potentially get another movement like this one down here. So this would give me, for example, would me, allow me to move another unit to uh, pretty much an adjacent building of my own in this case. But again, right now, don't have any troops out there. So I think this should be something I should be doing relatively soon now. But let's not forget to mark our turn here. And I guess in order to get us moving, we should start um, to deploy some troops next, which we are doing here. So we are moving to the deploy step here. This gives us pretty much one troop and one combat card. We can do those in any order. So let's have a look at our combat card. Again, this is something which I might need. Okay, that's a perfect one. Enrique Diaz. This gives us a fighting power of plus two. Really amazing. I think that's typically they give you, I think, one to two. There are some which lets you expand basic resources to increase your fighting strength. But getting this two out of the box, that's really, really helpful. So next, we actually have to look at our things here. And this is where I think I didn't pay attention enough. I never played with the green character and now I see the green character gets their resources uh, relatively cheaply actually because um, they also get those standard, I don't know what those are, grants here for only two basic resources. Most of the others require you to spend at least one gold. Again, gold is a wild card, so I can still go for one of those. On the other hand, going for my monarch here would require me to spend two gold, which I don't have right now. And I didn't also pay attention here. This dragoon would cost me one science. And I think the cannon always costs you one gold and a science, but it also has the most fighting power here of five. Pretty powerful stuff. So that's the question. Should I now really spend my gold? But I have now drawn the card. I really should have paid attention here, Marcus. I should have checked out my board. That was the one piece I did not familiarize myself with, actually. Ah, that's bad. Yeah, I, I still think I should do that now, actually, because we have to start moving. So we are going with the basically grunt here. So we are spending our two resources from our uh, trading post. They go back to the supply accordingly. In theory, this would give us two victory points at the end of the game, but again, we do not care about this. So we are sending this fella into our capital here. And because we deployed our first guy here, um, we get the bonus from Dom Pedro the first here. And in this case, it's one basic good of our choosing. Here, I'm not 100% sure. Again, I haven't played with Dom Pedro. If this one also triggers, if we're going for this one too. I think it does. The German rules stay each time you are doing this. Yeah, I think I think that's, that's okay. But right now, let's not worry about that too much. For this case, we can go for a basic resource. And I think in this case, maybe up next, we should go for the sawmill maybe. So preparing for that sawmill. Ah, uh, let's do that actually. Let's do that. So I will go for, I don't know, let's go for this cane resource. It doesn't really matter too much if it's cane or coffee, but just to show you something else, but that was our action. But because we now do have some units on the board, we can start to move them actually. So again, we can get a free movement, which allows me to move any troop to an adjacent space, whatever that is, other than maybe the um, capital of another player in a multiplayer game. Here I'm allowed to enter that. But as soon as I enter something with hostile troops, I have to fight. Or in this case, my additional movement in this case would allow me to teleport a unit back to to any one of my cities. That's, I think, not what I'm going to do in this scenario here later on, or in another scenario, multiplayer scenario, this could be extremely important. So I guess let's start moving, I don't know, in here. 
one space adjacent so we have to start moving somewhere and again for this movement alone we need some extra stuff but again there there is extra movement which allows me to move into an adjacent gold mine here or into an adjacent wood or along the corner of the map that's why it's not just one movement per per turn necessarily there are ways that you can move um, basically multiple space in a given turn and i also do have troops out there like the dragoon who could take other units with them also extremely important before i move on let's have another look at our goal cards here so we have already two-thirds completed this first one here so we have the trading post and we have one military unit out there we still need the farm in order to build the farm we need one more resource which we don't have right now that's truly a pity and i think i have to allow myself a mulligan here i have to go in with this wooden resource here by the way sorry for that but again nothing really happened so far i was going to go for the sawmill the problem is the sawmill needs to be built into a forest and right now i don't have a forest space adjacent to me so i think that wouldn't work so i could go for the plantation here for example and i think hmm, that's what i might want to do just to prepare stuff i could go for a painting but the paintings right now are not incredibly important that's kind of a bummer maybe also a problem with the solo mode because there are now paintings out which do not necessarily help me here so i guess yeah let's build something again yeah let's do that so we are spending our wood and we'll go for a plantation which i think i will build in here adjacent so it pretty much allows me then later on to build something into this forest text if i need that but i think that's still pretty strong it will produce right away which means i get two sugar cane onto this space here which is now free to to use and uh, afterwards i get my free movement and in theory i could also use my extra movement here which would allow me to move to an adjacent building of my own but i think in this case this doesn't really help me so i will simply go with my free movement for now and we'll move into this space here allowing me to explore both of those exploration tiles later on again not ex not sure if they will be any helpful in this scenario there's a whole bag of extra tiles here and maybe i was extremely unlucky here and didn't do me anything good i i'm hoping for something cool but yeah let's not hold our breath just yet for this but yeah that was already our fourth action out of 20 so we are almost 25 percent through the game and i don't feel like i have achieved anything yes we will go through the first card relatively soon but boy this really feels very bad actually but at least i have a troop out there i have some resources i have some building and again up next i think i need my plantation which i will not be able to create just yet so for my next action i need to renovate yes in order to do that i have to spend any one resource and a basic resource in this case i will get rid of my sugarcane and the oh <sighs> that's a good point now wait a second wait a second wait a second wait a second if i renovate the plantation i could flip it directly to the other side which should be the plantation or the farm but then i don't have that oh that's so tricky now that's so tricky no i think i have to renovate no i have to spend the resource here and again the renovate action either allows me to flip over one of those tiles and then they will also automatically produce maybe that's what i should done before i shouldn't have spent two resources on the trading post i should have yeah that was stupid that was stupid but what you cannot do is to use the the resource from its tile to renovate itself basically that's not allowed so i definitely want the trading post here and on the other side of this plantation there would be my farm and that doesn't help but okay the other option you can do with renovate you can pretty much fill up the an additional uh, building that you already own and in this case it's also not a problem we are going with the trading post here this gives me some more gold we have the wood here i think that's still not too bad and then i get my 
free action, uh, my free movement, and I could roll a die here, so I will simply go for the top one here. We are moving in here, and that's basically an expedition, and that's a nice expedition because if we come up with five fighting points, and this this unit here has two fighting points, by the way. Um, we could then send them out on an expedition and if we are successful we're getting a gold card and those gold cards are extremely powerful you can use them as a gold as a wild card resource that's already pretty amazing on its own but you can also trigger various effects on that if we are unlucky we are getting um, only end of game kind of scoring cards but still we can use those cards to whatever pay resources with so it's never a loss but yeah coming up with five fighting points right now Hmm, could be a little bit problematic but for now that's okay it's out there definitely a good good thing it's not one of those which simply give us extra victory points for the end of the game so that has at least a somewhat useful effect i like that but that was already our fifth action of the game and we still haven't made it to era two I think we should be able to make it to era 2 with our next action and I'm thinking about should I do that in this video or in the next no let's 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 do that in this video I think we are still good on time so again we are going to build something and we want to build the farm now in order to do that we need wood not a problem and we need oops a plantation here perfect another plantation uh, sugar cane here um, again which is for this uh, farm up here we has to be built onto a grassland and I think in this case it doesn't really matter we can place it here again no one is going to attack us but yeah this is the one which is which we pretty much need the least it immediately comes with two coffee beans come on I really like this sorting box but it's a little bit small for my big hands so we do have some resources now in our stock. I like that. I really do like that. And now we really have completed our first gold card here, the Explorer. And there's some nice flavor text here, which I'm not going to um, translate for you. Again, we have the troop, we have the trading post, we have the farm out there on the board. Perfect. Which means we are automatically moving into era number two which means we can take this action marker and place it under one of these actions here and whenever we are taking this action we are getting this bonus here and this allows me to peek under one of those exploration tiles i think that can be extremely useful what actions are we going to take Mm, I think it will be, I think building, building, building. We need a city. We are building once more, but only once. I think up next would be either this or that. Let's go with the painting action here again. Not really the most important bonus, but there is one more benefit we are getting out of this, pretty much making it into era two or full, no, fulfilling our gold card that is. And this allows us to place one of our palaces out here on the board. They all come with sometimes end of game bonuses, sometimes sometimes immediate bonuses um, and I think for this particular scenario this very first one I think this is a mill this could be the most important one we have to build it onto an era one building not a problem we have plenty of those what it does we can no longer flip it over but again do not really care about this it comes with an immediate bonus here this is one of those sugar canes let's take it it goes into our reserve and we can pretty much produce or manufacture our first product it has to be the cube one but it can be either the red or the white one and I guess in this case we are going for the red one because we are producing sugar cane here so there is a good chance we can take this one too and now we can pretty much place this onto a matching space here on this this can be either the renovate action or it can be the harbor action the harbor action is extremely powerful because whenever you go there now we will get a gold card and that can getting these gold resources out relatively early on that's that's extremely important so i guess that was a pretty cool turn actually so we have dealt with this from now on we will start using our um, era 2 action tile doesn't really change a thing the only let's say bonus we are getting out of this wherever we have taken the tile from i think this was the building action now we could in theory now go there again because we removed the space so with a fresh tile we can pretty much take the same action uh, consecutively which can be extremely powerful in this case i'm not 100 sure but let's think about that too we 
still get a movement for this building. This was pretty much only our bonus for this card here. We will put it next to us. So we are already, I think that's pretty good. No, I think I, I really like that. And then I guess we are moving as we still still have a tile that's unexplored right next to us let's look at this and that's it's another expedition a lot of those are expeditions so i shouldn't be surprised actually but that's a lame one very cool one when you're playing multiplayer getting three extra points is not nothing uh, but we need to come up with six strength points in order to be successful on this expedition um, for three victory points but again we are not fighting for victory points in this scenario here do i get i could move to an adjacent building we don't have any adjacent buildings here so we can ignore that too and i guess that's pretty much the end of our turn which means we completed our sixth action already and i do have enough of those white discs but i want to use different colors because they help me to better identify where i am to see how how much I have to speed up the game and I think I have forgotten to place this palace here so let's quickly do that but again it doesn't really matter too much this is not a palace that gives you any victory points yeah any victory point at the end of the game we simply place it there we park it there it gave us a lot of cool stuff but that's pretty much it for this particular palace and i think that's again now really the end of the turn and with that being said i guess i will end my playthrough for today i haven't really shown you these awesome paintings here because their effects didn't really come into play right now this will most likely change because there is one particular one maybe let's show this one to you let's this one down here i will not even try to pronounce it correctly but this one allows me to give my commandante my i think it's the monarch in this in this english version of the game for this particular one to have the same ability like my dragoon so i can take other units with me and this can be extremely powerful on the other hand i have to build the dragoon anyway because i need them all so this one is also extremely powerful up here machado uh, de assis um, who allows me to use gold cards uh, as a wild card resource for science also extremely powerful so i maybe this might be our next thing to get especially as i have to acquire two of those uh, pinkish paintings in order to yeah achieve my era to gold here in this case we need two more units and we need to build the city cities are something that can only be built as of era two and the same is true for i believe it's the gold foundry and the plant oh no that's the plantation actually yeah the plantation is um let me see do i have that that's the plantation here the cotton plantation but i don't need those i just need a city and two more units and i need those units anyway in order to meet the other goals and to be strong enough to defeat the Dutch players in this case. But yeah, again, with that being said, I really hope you are as excited as I am for episode two and most likely the final episode. It's a relatively fast paced game, though I should be able to complete my playthrough in my second video here. Leave me your comments, your suggestions, what you think I should be doing. I feel a little bit lost right now. Again, I think I know what I need to do in a multiplayer game here not so much how well i'm doing in respect of in pace but let's see how far we can get before i say goodbye huge shout out to all of my patrons and channel members out there really do appreciate all your support you guys are amazing like and subscribe leave a comment this also greatly helps my channel and myself to really get more content out to you and yeah hope to see you soon in one of my other videos and until then Bye-bye.